is a quick tutorial on how to operate the ROX 10.0. The ROX 10.0 has six main buttons. It has the enter button or the power button, the mode button, the back or stop button, the start or lap button, and it has your two scrolling buttons, your left or right or your up and down. To turn on the ROX 10.0, you press and hold the power button, and the ROX 10.0 turns on. To make it easier to view, I'm going to activate the backlight by pressing the two bottom buttons. And now we have the backlight. The ROX 10.0 is broken up into six main menus. The main menus are the training menu, and with the scrolling buttons, we'll scroll to the right and load track. The memory, status information, extras, and settings. In the settings menu, you have a lot of different options. Using the scrolling menus again, this time now we move down to device, bike 1 through 3, altimeter functions, the user, intensity zones, target zones, power target zones, GPS settings, favorites. The ROX 10.0 is Sigma's first computer where with firmware updates we can completely delete the entire software, almost like an operating system change on a smartphone and we can send via email or a download from our website an entire new uh, software allowing the product to have a indefinite life. We can also reset it back to factory settings. If you notice in the top of the menu is a navigation bar. This will tell you what menu you're in but it'll also tell you what the individual buttons functions will be. So to show you I'm going to scroll down to the bike one and three totals it's important because this is where we're going to end up pairing a transmitter to the computer. You can program three different bicycles. I'm going to do bicycle two. It'll allow you to choose the type of bike, whether it's a mountain bike or a road bike. You enter the weight of your bike, your wheel size. But if we scroll down to the amp plus pairing here, we can select our transmitters. So on the bike, I have a speed and the cadence transmitter. I'm going to press the top right button that says search. It's going to search for my speed transmitter and it found an ID. I'm going to scroll down the cadence and do the same thing. It found an ID. If you happen to have another brand's uh, Ant Plus transmitter that is a speed and cadence combo, the ROX 10 is capable of pairing with that. I have a chest strap on, so I'm going to click search. It found the ID. And lastly, if you have a power meter, you're capable of being able to pair power and cadence from a crank system or power and speed from a wheel system. And some of the power taps are able to do power, speed, and cadence all from one hub. So you have the ability to be compatible with all the different power meters out there in the market. To get back out of this menu, I'm going to click back. Now I'm back to the bike 2 setting. Click back again. I'm back to the bike 1 to 3 settings, click back again. Now I'm back to the main settings menu, and to exit this, we would click back one more time. Scrolling left, back through the features, we have extras. In extras, we have a stopwatch, a countdown timer, and a compass. And these features will all allow you to use the rocks when it's not on a bike. So if you want to use it running or hiking, uh, these functions can function without speed and distance information. If I click back out of here and I go to status information, I can see how much battery life is remaining. In this case, I have 40% battery. GPS signal, I'm inside, so it's probably going to be weak, if any. So this will tell you how accurate it is. So at the moment, it's saying that it is precise to zero feet because it has not picked up the transmitters. But here, it'll also give you the date and the time based on the GPS status. And on the bottom, you'll see how many uh, satellites it has picked up and what their locations are. And lastly, in the setting, we have the memory. So right now, I have a few rides stored in here, uh, which doesn't consume a tremendous amount of memory. So I have 95.6% free. Clicking back and back one more time. Now changing the menu. Now I'm in memory. In memory, this is where, after a ride, you can go back and you can see all your ride data. 
you can see a tremendous amount of data on here. I'll quickly go through and just give you a, a little bit of information. Each ride will be stored based on the date that you rode, the time that you rode, and how far you rode. And that's just because many people might ride several different rides in one day. It's also important to note here that when you do start a ride, you should immediately reset your data before you go off, and that will trigger it to save that ride based on that date and that time. If you reset your ride after your last ride, the date and time will start at the time you last reset it, which means that yesterday's ride could potentially now uh, be the start date, which might confuse you. I'm going to select this ride, and here it breaks down all the information into different categories, such as bicycle data, which will be your average speed, your max speed, your trip distance, your average expansion, uh, average cadence, max cadence, go back here heart rate data if I had a chest strap on looks like we'll give you average heart rate max heart rate percent of max average heart rate calories uh, time in your target zone time in intensity zones one through four and of course you can go through all the different menus I'm gonna scroll down to the graph analysis because in the graph analysis and this ride might not be very exciting because it was just a demonstration purpose but when you click on the speed you'd be able to see your speed ride your speed so in this case uh, I started out with an original ride and was riding around the parking lot so I had variations in my speed when I stopped and moved indoors for the presentation unfortunately I'm using one of the test stations that's simulating speed and therefore the speed is consistent the two breaks in speed, the two lines going down, indicate that the speed dropped to zero, and that's because I had bad batteries in the train in the uh, box. We get out of here, same thing, you would be able to see changes in heart rate or cadence and power and altitude. So you can see a tremendous amount of information right on the rocks itself. However, you can also download all the data and be able to see it in full color and graphs on the data center. When we get into the load track section, this is where you can view all of the different rides that you have, the ones that you've recently ridden or driven, or ones that you have stored. So if I go into the stored track, uh, two weeks ago Randy and I went and we rode in Colorado and did the triple bypass. In this case, if we open up this ride, we can click show track. With the zoom buttons on the bottom we can zoom in and out to the ride. The ride was 118 miles one way so it's just a simple track. If we go back we can show a altitude profile of the ride. In this case it was over three summits so we have a condensed version of the altitude profile. And then lastly, we can show the details of the ride. In this case, it was 118 miles. Total altitude climbed was just under 10,000 feet. And then you can rank the, uh, the data if you want to be able to keep track, almost like an iPod system. So going back out of here, the last menu is probably the most important is the training menu. In the training menu, the computer is going to look just like a ROX 9.1 or many of other Sigma products. So speed is always going to be main and in the middle. We have the four current functions on the top. The current functions are going to be your heart rate, your altitude, your cadence, and your slope. In order to be able to zoom into any one of those, we press the top right button and you would see heart rate, cadence, altitude, or slope. The bottom functions are just like the ROX 9.1 going to be your my favorites so you can program technically on the ROX 10.0 up to 28 different functions under favorites. You have favorites A and favorites B. On this bottom section you'll be able to see 10 functions that you program so using the bottom buttons you can scroll left or you can scroll right through your functions and you can go through the cycle. 
Now there's technically three different training menus. The main bicycle computer menu is the one. If you press the mode button, this will be your GPS signal. So the GPS will show you a cookie crumb ride of where you are in your ride. You'll also have your speed, your trip distance. Now you can program those sections to be six different functions. So they'll show two at a time. In this case I have speed and trip distance, time of arrival and time to destination. Um, so if I'm navigating to a certain point based on where I am, it'll calculate how much further I have to go. And then I also have GPS accuracy and just simply direction. The third menu is going to be the altitude menu. So if I had a ride loaded in here, this would show me where I am about a kilometer into my ride or a mile into my ride and then it'll show the altitude profile of what is to come for the next five kilometers. So just give somebody a optimistic or pessimistic view depending on what you are. Again on the top section you'd be able to program up the six different functions. So I have speed and trip distance, incline in percentage as well as altitude, and uh, altitude ascent or how many feet we've gone uphill and the trip distance how far we've ridden uphill. So the ROX 10.0 is capable of providing a tremendous amount of information. All depends on how the user wants to view it. So the ROX 10.0 GPS coming out in September.